You just got your first red tail bow eye at your local pet shop. You're super excited, so you take some really nice pictures and you post them in one of the Facebook boa forums for everyone to admire. You get a lot of really good comments, but then someone says, wait, that's not a red tail boa. So how do you know if you have a red tail boa? That is actually the number one question that's asked in the boa forums on Facebook and other places online. So today I want to show you some specific examples of both red tail boas and non-red tail boas. I'll tell you the physical characteristics and the other differences you can look at to differentiate the two types. And I'll also focus on some specific husbandry requirements specific to the red tails and the non-red tails. I'm Brian from Brian Boas. I'm a breeder of boa constrictors. And if you like the contents of this video, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel for more videos on all aspects of keeping and breeding boas in captivity. On the surface, it seems a pretty simple question. If your boa has red in its tail, that should be a red tail boa. If it doesn't have red in its tail, that shouldn't be a red tail boa, right? Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. If you bought your boa at your local pet shop and it wasn't a specialty reptile store, chances are pretty good that it's not a true red tail boa. So what exactly do I mean by a true red tail boa? What I'm referring to is a one subspecies of boa known as boa constrictor constrictor or BCC for short. So this is a form that's found in the Amazon uh, of South America, east of the Andes Mountains. The most common boa that you see encountered in pet shops is described as a Colombian red tail boa, or also as a common boa, or simply as a normal boa. This is a different subspecies or even species of boa that's known as boa constrictor imperator or boa imperator. It's currently being reclassified as a separate species. So now I want to show you a few examples of boas that are not red tail boas. So this is not a red tail boa, this is a, an albino boa. And it seems pretty obvious that this isn't a red tail boa. However, I see pretty frequently online animals that are described as albino red tail boa. There have been a few true albino, uh, true red tail boas that, which have popped up over the years. However, none of them have established a line and been bred in captivity. So any albino that you see, or virtually all the other morphs as well, is going to be boa imperator or of mixed ancestry. They are very good pets though, um, beautiful animals. So the albino boa is not a red tail boa. This snake is probably the most commonly kept boa in the world. And this is the common boa, Boa Imperator, from Colombia. It's frequently referred to as a Colombian red tail in the pet trade. And if we look at her, you know, one of the differences that's often cited between red tails and non-red tails is that the red tails are more colorful. And looking at this girl, you can see that that's not always the case. This is a very colorful animal. This is actually a line that's selectively bred for their beautiful colors called the Coupes Pastel. So non-red tail boas can frequently have these nice colors. In addition, non-red tail boas can frequently have some red in their tail. So looking at her tail, if I can get her to unwrap here, you can see she does have some red in her tail, but the red is a little bit darker. It's more of a brick red. And you can see that there's also a lot of black in the tail as well. In general, the true red tails will have a much brighter tail. Uh, the tail is much longer. And there's a lot more contrast between the tail saddles, the colors, and the background color. Looking at the body of this animal, if we look at the saddles, which are these dark markings that go down the dorsal surface, the contrast between the saddles and the background color is not as great as we would see in the true red tail boas. However, the non-red tail boas are beautiful animals. They make great pets. Um, this is probably your best bet for your first boa and may be the best boa, all-around boa pet uh, that, there, that there is, actually. 
So now I want to show you some examples of true red tail boas, boa constrictor constrictor. So this first BCC is the Suriname locality. And the first difference that you'll see is the appearance of the tail. So you can see just how long and red that the tail on this guy is. The red tail blotches extend about, in this particular animal, about 10 tail saddles. Although the tail is often shorter than in this guy. Also, the color of the tail is exceptionally red and there is a large amount of contrast between the red color and the background color. So if we look at this guy's body, the other difference that we see is looking at the shape of the saddles. These are what's known as peaked saddles. And if you look at the saddles, there's these little bumps in the middle, or these little extensions of the saddle that extend in both towards the tail and towards the head. Uh, not all of the BCC have these peak saddles. Some of them have a more typical round shaped saddle. And then some of the non-BCC, the non-red boas, will also have the peak saddles, so they're not diagnostic in themselves. But many BCC do have the peak saddles, and it's certainly something that I think a lot of breeders have tried to bring out in their boas by selectively breeding for these peak saddles. So another difference is the overall shape of the body of this animal. In general, the BCC have a more uh, laterally compressed, more muscular body. It's a more square in cross section than the uh, non red tail boas, which tend to be a little bit rounder. That's, and in general, they are more muscular animals. They'll, they tend to squeeze your hand a little tighter than the non red tail boas. And then looking at the head of this guy, he has a wedge shaped, kind of an elongated head that's more pointy than in the non red tail boa, which had kind of a more rounder, shorter head with a shorter snout. And looking real closely, I don't know if you can see on camera, but above the eye, there are a couple markings above each of this guy's eye that are known as, red, as eyelash markings. And not all red tails have them, but some do have these two eyelash markings above the eye. So that's a Suriname boa constrictor constrictor. So now I want to show you another example of a boa constrictor constrictor, a true red tail. This is an example of the Guiana locality. And looking at his tail, this guy doesn't have the same bright red tail as the Suriname that we just looked at. You can see his tail is kind of a dark maroon color, almost blackish in appearance. So true red tail boas don't always have that very nice bright red tail. However, if we look at his overall body markings, you can see similar peak saddles and also very high contrast, similar to what we saw in the Suriname boa. The BCC in general have very high contrast between the markings and the background color. Looking at this guy up close, you can also see he has the eyelash markings above his eyes. Hopefully you can see that on camera, but this guy has even more contrasty head markings. That he has these two lines above each eye that are a little bit darker, which are known as the eyelashes. You can also see how squeezy this guy is. In general, the true red tails, because they're more muscular, they like to hold on a little bit tighter. Um, in general, the non-red tail boas are a little more laid back when you take them out and they don't squeeze your hand quite as, as hard. I'm going to show you one more example of a boa constrictor constrictor, true red tail boa. So this is a Peruvian locale boa constrictor constrictor. And if we look at his tail, what you can see is that the color of the tail isn't quite as bright as at the Suriname. This is kind of more of a brick red in color. But if you look at his body, they have these beautiful golden yellow body coloration with very high contrast. Looking at this guy's head, you can see the graceful wedge-shaped head and the elongated snout seen in BCC. He also has very high contrast head markings, including these really nice eyelash markings above his eye. So that's a Peruvian boa constrictor constrictor. 
So I'm going to end this video by just touching on some of the differences in husbandry requirements between the common boas and the true red tail boas. In general, the true red tail boas are a lot less forgiving as far as their husbandry requirements. You really have to have the temperature and humidity just right or you're going to run into problems with your true red tail boas. In contrast, the common boas are a lot more forgiving in this aspect. Another difference is that the true red tail boas grow at a much slower rate than the common boas and they have to be fed very sparingly. So a common scenario with people that are getting into true red tails for the first time is they will feed their animal and a few days later they'll notice this regurgitated, really stinky carcass of a mouse that was regurgitated up. Um, and if you don't have the temperatures exactly right, if the temperature is a little too cold or too hot, there's a good chance your animal might regurgitate like this. And so when they regurgitate, they'll go ahead and they'll feed it again in another week or two. And what they see is the animal regurgitates again. And so unfortunately, once the animal has regurgitated a couple times, it's very difficult to break out of the cycle. And there's a pretty good chance that your BCC is not going to make it. In contrast, the digestive tracts of the common boa seem to be a lot stronger. You know, I've never seen one that regurgitated. Even people that feed them every week, they don't usually have problems with the regurgitation. If you're looking for your first boa, in general I recommend a common boa over a true red tail boa. Their husbandry requirements are a lot more straightforward and in general they make a better pet snake. If you want an animal that you can take out and you can hold and show your friends and admire, you're typically better off with a common boa for most snake keepers. Everyone sees the true red tail boas and they're just blown away by their beauty, but they neglect that they are quite a bit more difficult to keep in captivity. Um, and you're probably better off with a common boa as a first time boa owner. So I hope this was somewhat helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please comment below. I'll be happy to answer any questions I can. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel for more videos on all aspects of keeping and breeding boas in captivity. Thank you for your attention and remember, enjoy your boas.